Hello everyone! Today we are doing something really exciting, 3D relief feather. Using easy to learn techniques and with the help of supplies you can find at home, I'll show you how to make something beautiful. Let's get right into it. Now probably most of you know that I sometimes have seasons for colors or particular style, but this time I'm in the season for feathers and I've realized I haven't done a 3D relief feather yet. We will be working with 50 by 20 canvas, lightweight long canvas. I've done peacock feather once, a glue gun peacock feather once, but this time I want to make feather out of my paste. I'm going to cover the canvas with gesso so that we've got a nice background. This is the gesso I'm going to use, super heavy gesso by Liquitex but I could just use a regular one since I'm really not looking into some particular texture. Why? Because the feather is going to be the focal point, the feather is going to be textured. So all I'm doing is just covering the canvas. Forgive me the noise. I've finished and as you can see I spread it leaving the minimal imperfections on purpose just to make it more interesting but it's still flat and I'm not going to add any more texture. I think this will be enough. I usually draw my designs on paper and then I transfer them here but because it's going to be just one further I might as well try and position it here the way I want it to go. I'm doing it gently because if something goes wrong I won't be able to rub it off. It can be really touching the edge. I mean it can be but then I won't be able to fit it. But like that. Now I could leave it and come back with a piping bag and make those little sections. Or I can draw them. Maybe that will be easier. As you can see by the mess I am rubbing off and changing and trying to make the feather look appealing. Some sections as you can see overlapping. We'll see what it's going to look like with my paste but at the moment I am kind of trying to figure out how to make it look good. <laughs> I think I am pretty happy with the shape. What are your thoughts? It's going to be changed slightly with the paste. Once the feather is ready, I can mix my two ingredients. I am going to use heavy gesso and all-purpose filler. My own combination. Of course, you can use any modeling paste. I tried this one on its own before. It works as well. I tried heavy gesso on its own. It's also fine, but I kind of like it combined, like the texture. So I'm going to mix it here. I'm not really thinking of any proportions, just roughly. Probably need quite a lot. It's, it's a long feather. So let's start with that. And I'll probably use the same amount of gesso for the mixing. I should have put it on a sturdy background, not like this, but it's all right. I rolled my own cone, so... Okay, I'll use it as a piping tool and let's put it in. That's it. And now I'm going to close it. It's quite a lot. It's the biggest one I've made so far. I can use just a plastic bag, but I thought this is going to be more comfortable. Okay, we're ready. I just need to cut the tip off. Cutting the tip off. I'm not sure how thick I want it. Maybe I should make it smaller first and then bigger. Let's test it. That's really nice, but it's very thin. I'm wondering, do I like it? Let, let's cut a little bit more. I think this is going to be perfect. However, the really tricky part is this mid part. I'll start with the shaft and then continue with the rakes. I probably will have to go twice over the shaft, maybe. It's <laughs> one little mistake here. Oh, we can rectify. Oh my goodness, that was fun! Okay, uh, let me take a brush with some water and we can straighten some sections. I'm going over this section again. Just this part, because I want it thicker, ever so slightly. 
And now plenty of little ones. No worries if it looks a bit different to the design. Well, this is the first one. Or maybe I'll reduce the number of those lines. Wet brush is really useful here on the thin ending like that. That's lovely. Okay, quite a few to go as you can see, but I'm not discouraged by any means. Don't know what happened to my bag, but it's flowing really nicely now. And it's thin at the end. Perfect. Now, this is super easy now. There's a curvy one here. I got this actually very quickly. As I said, by number 10, I will be proficient. See how easy? That's a long one. That's probably one of the longest ones. If you do it pretty fast, it's nice and smooth. And I join them using a brush. I can't believe how efficient this is. It feels like nothing is gone from here. And I've done half. I'm trying to stretch it in some places to make it thinner. Oh, if you're wondering, the other half is already dry. That's why I put my hand on it. Time to paint it. I am going to paint the whole thing with some neutral colors first and then I'll decide what else. So we'll start with obviously white. At the same time, I don't want to clog all those lovely... Can you hear it? Oh, so nice. So what else? Well, I'm going to use burnt sienna, burnt amber and a little bit of grey, I suppose, or silver. I am only going to use soft brushes. So I want to be very gentle with my feather. Burn sienna. Oh, might be too much. I think I prefer burnt amber. I don't know, burnt sienna looks a bit kind of pinky here, doesn't it? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a bit of gold into this one to get rid of this pinkiness. It wouldn't have to be gold. I could have added some yellow, for example, and mix them together. I've got an interesting color here. All right, that's that's more like it. Oh, that's a pretty color. Yes. This is going to be a quick job. One quick layer has a base color. And then I'll think what else. I'm trying to be quite careful with my little wispy bits. This Naples yellow did the job. I don't want it to be uniform. It's going to be, there will be some shadows later on. So, so that will take me a couple of minutes and I'll be back. I had a bit of a darker paint here on my brush, but actually that does not look bad. So be brave. Was supposed to be just the background but at the moment i'm adding some darker stuff here and maybe to the background as well i will of course add some other deeper shadows later i'm doing something quite silly i'm trying to achieve a dry brush effect with a soft brush soft blender but at the moment as i said it's all right because this is all in the background i'll change stuff anyway I think I should leave it to dry and then come back later. I like the dry, dry paint effect. It looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Let's leave it for now. Such a small detail but makes a huge difference. Let me try a bit of yellow ochre because I still got this kind of uh, hint of pinkish brown that I want to get rid of. Well, that's nice, that's nice. A little bit of this in places. I don't want it completely yellow, no, not at all. However, I want a mixture of color. Now I'm adding darker color closer to the midsection. And it's a mixture of all the browns I've used. I'm making this part maybe a bit darker than the other. And I still think that of all the browns, the burnt umber, I don't know, in my opinion, works best. I will be adding some lighter values as well. But at the moment, I'm enjoying this. 
little bit of this color now. The edges. It's a really small amount. I also have a small palette knife. I'm touching some of the edges with a bit of white. And I'm also thinking about adding some gold. I like using my finger because I can really feel where I'm applying it. That really smallest amount ever but it kind of popped didn't it yes i'm going to add some gold now this might be a life changer look at this side now so nothing shiny okay oh yes 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 it doesn't have to be everywhere but definitely it's quite subtle what do you think of this look now? Time for some more sparkle. Gilding paste. And a brush. Small brush. As usual, I'm not sure how much to add. It's a bit frothy. Now I'm going to pick which ones are going to be graced with some gold. side down oh my goodness I forgot about it for half an hour I'm just hoping still work and I forgot which sections are sticky I'll be just touching every part hoping that that's the one okay so I would apply for the whole feather and I'll be back with a brush wow it looks so much but I'm sure it won't be once I do this, oh well, you can see a bit now. All right, so let me remove all that and come back to you. Well, there we are. I've done many feathers before, but none quite like this one. So I am very excited to hear what you think of it. If you would like to help support the channel, you can check out my Patreon for lots of extra content. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you all next Saturday. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.